Brandon, I'd like you to talk about the history of Brioni. You're coming upon your 70th anniversary. Um, yeah, I mean, as you say, you know, it's founded 70 years ago now um, by the two co-founders, you know, the master tailor and the business genius that was the two founders. Um, and the most great thing is that they really wanted to bring together this, the art of tradition, you know, in something so kind of elevated in craftsmanship, but then to kind of turn it around and do something completely different. They based it around the island of Brioni, which was at that time the island that all the kind of would be jet set of that period if it existed. And then they really wanted to start to think about how it was different and what they wanted to do and how they would kind of dominate a complete, um, what would be kind of a new kind of Italian era at that time. It was all around the Dolce Vita. They kind of monopolized, they were dressing everybody within the Dolce Vita. They kind of were very avant-garde for their period. You know, they were the first to put color onto a, into collections, the first to launch silk inside tailoring, which was considered an abomination. Mm -hmm. And then again, you know, in 1952, they were the first brand to actually come up with the idea of presenting a men's fashion show. Can you talk a little bit about your first presentation? You're known in the industry having these incredible presentations <laughs> from glass encasements to museums and, yeah. and men on podiums, your models, and, yeah. and showing your design. Um, can, you, can you explain a little bit about how passionate your creativity has changed that visual for Brioni? Yeah, I mean, there's two kind of sides to it. There's the, my personal side about that is how I feel um, what we actually do is and how I should present it and how it's about being different, you know, being truly one of a kind and being something that is really about the company, you know, that they, if you look back to the history, they were doing these kind of, um, not wild would say, but uh, you know, these kind of very thought things that they emptied the fountain in the ward off Astoria, they put the models inside and they refilled it. So the people coming to see the presentations, ex you know, seen that from the beginning. So it's a good balance and it's kind of, a, for me, I even say it's kind of a perfect match that they were like that. So it's natural for me to want to be able to show it in a kind of different way. And I look at it really that how we work is a kind of, a, a, a type of art form that what we do in a medium and how we work and I always try to put them together like for the one where I wanted to do the very first presentation that it wasn't about the shock factor at all it was really that to make you look at Brioni differently you know it wasn't what everybody thought it was you know it had this kind of reputation that people thought a oh, Brioni should be like this and I had been inside for four months and Having worked, I seen so much different. I seen it was this amazing diamond that nobody was able to see, mm -hmm. and it was the idea that okay, now we we weren't going to let you just be able to touch the fabrics and be immediately seduced. It was like for you to actually walk into this beautiful palazzo that we chose, and actually it was 21 boys that we reduced it down to so 24 boys. So it was so tight yeah. that you just had these rows of glass cases as if you were in a museum, and there were these absolutely special animated pieces that you had to kind of stand back and look at. So this was what we, art. yeah, you know, that it was, I wanted to show you the art of Brioni. Who is the Brioni man? I mean, it, the, what why are they getting out of Brioni? Yeah, I mean, it's really about this certain level of understanding of craftsmanship. I mean, it is, they are really one off. I mean, it, there is even inside a jacket, there is a minimum between two, three to five thousand hand stitches. Uh, that you don't even Three see. Five thousand. Yeah, and this this is just in the thing in our evening where there's anywhere between eight to fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. um, they are the two reasons why. Yeah, so this is two reasons. Also, there is the choice. You know that we don't choose fabrics; we create fabrics. Right. So we actually work with mills to create fabrics from the choice of the yarns from the beginning. So, not only the creativity and the tradition inside, but that's where the innovation comes in. That mm -hmm. we. Uh, manipulate things that you wouldn't even imagine to work with inside us you know that we double weave some certain things we inject color into yarns or it's very technical what we do in a certain sense that gives this total new language of what is innovation where it's married with craftsmanship. Well, while we're on this topic can you speak to us about Simozura? Yeah the Simozura from Brioni I mean really it's the pinnacle of our handmade I mean having visited our tillage you actually know that the Brioni, everything is made by hand. So, you know, whether it's the ready to wear or, or the Sumerzuri, it's made by hand. But the Sumerzuri is when it's the nearest thing to male couture. I mean, it's bespoke. It's very much for you, about you, made for you, done by you. You know, it's, we create very much you on a block. You know, that <laughs> you come, we take all the measurements. Then we don't 
take a jacket and fit it to you. We actually make your block, make your pattern, make you mm -hmm. in a two-dimensional form to be able to create you in a three-dimensional form.